Mrs. Gandhi, can you imagine any circumstances in which you might once again become Prime Minister of India? I can certainly imagine the circumstances, but the question is whether I want to be or whether I'll agree to be or not. What would be the terms under which you would agree to be? No, it's not a question of terms. I don't want to be. You often but talk... But in politics, you can't make a very categorical answer. I didn't want to be in Parliament, and I told everybody I wouldn't stand. But uh, here I am. W what do you think the Indian people saw in you? Did they feel that you had a particular sympathy for their cause? What made you the, the figure that you are in, in their eyes? It's what I've done for them. It's what they've seen that I've done. And yet they booted you out in 1977? Well, I think booted is a strong word. Uh, we were defeated. But within uh, less than a month after the defeat, they were coming back to me because there was such a, such a very sustained malicious propaganda that people were taken in by it. When people like your own parliamentary spokesman describe you as the woman to whom the gods have entrusted the destiny of India, what's your reaction? Well, I haven't even heard this phrase. I don't know who's used it. Do you, do you regard that kind of phrase as a meaningless extravagance? Yes, and we, we, in India, they, 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 most speeches are full of this thing. If you see the, uh, you know, the addresses that are presented to anybody, not me, anybody at all, you will be full of phrases, li phrases like this. Do you ever feel that you have in any way abused the trust that the, that the Indian people have, have no, put in you? certainly not. I'd like, obviously, because that's a question directed towards the state of emergency, which you declared in 1975, when you gave yourself very great powers, and you explained, if I'm right, when you wrote to the President requiring the permission to, to carry out the state of emergency, information has reached us which indicates that there is an imminent danger to the security of India. What was the precise nature of that danger? I'm afraid you can't um, say anything with great preci precision. But you talked to your people of a deep and widespread conspiracy of which you were sure they were aware. What conspiracy? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Now, the whole con subcontinent has been destabilized. But this the was whole, internal, uh, the whole internal no, upheaval it, you, it were, you both. were warning. No, it was both. It was supported from outside. But you required the, the, the special powers on the basis of internal upheaval. But no, the question was, had it been only internal with no foreign interference, one could have dealt with it in a much easier way. But, but you didn't it is even part mention, you didn't, it is with respect, well, you didn't mention No, why should one mention everything? Internal. No, one doesn't mention everything at any time. Why should one? Can I, could I? But it's very obvious when the people have followed the doings of international agencies and who was present at India at what time. And what is happening today is borne out everything that we suspected earlier. Can I put to you the, the, the findings of the Shah Commission, which was set up to inquire whether there were any cause to take you to court and have you condemned for excesses, abuses of power? In that report, they, they quote, on the basis for your requiring this emergency, no evidence whatsoever, police reports, home ministry reports, your intelligence services, had given you no That's not evidence true. whatsoever? It is not true at all. What had they given you? What had they told you precisely? It's not a question they're telling me. I'm Prime Minister. I have the business to know. And all reports do not come through police. They come through other the heads of other states and very many other agencies. But they also had given those reports. How did Justice Matthew know, for instance? Why? And many other people who spoke at that time. This report is an entirely prejudiced, one-sided report. They've completely ignored whatever people had to say on the other side. Most of the people who have given evidence are government servants whose whole livelihood and future depends on what they said here. Do you not people respect have Justice Shah? He was, I after all, a former Chief Justice of India, Supreme Court judge? Who had expressed himself very strongly against me and my policies before being appointed what to this. What he said? He had made speeches against us. Recorded speeches yes, against you? Uh, well, not me personally, but against our policies. And he appeared against us when we, um, I mean, there was a, in fact, the parliament wanted to impeach him at one time. Did he not, because, it's not the reality, um, is that he yes. found against you in the courts on one occasion? I don't think he was in the court yet. Can I? But he opposed bank nationalization very, very strongly too. And it's after that that he spoke, he's been speaking continuously against me and my government. 
Mrs. Gandhi, was it mere coincidence? And I don't think that in any other country they would appoint, or even in, uh, in India, there's seldom been a case where somebody who's known to be anti has been appointed to inquire against that person. In fact, at the same time, another judge was approached. But because I had sub superseded him, he refused to take up these things because he said that people would not think he was fair. M Mrs. Gandhi, was it mere coincidence that at the same time the Allahabad High Court had said that you could stay in office as Prime Minister provisionally but had found you guilty of electoral malpractice and that therefore there was a serious risk that you would not be able to remain Prime Minister. Was that just coincidence that no, this came at the same moment? No, it was not a coincidence. Because you weren't the trying to escape from that, I mean. No, how does it help me to escape? Now, if I wanted to remain Prime Minister, all I had to do was to listen to the party bosses. They would not have wanted me out at all. I would have been Prime Minister for life. But you were disbarred from holding office under the findings of the court. No, yes, but on what issues? And if you look at your own newspapers, they all said they were very trivial issues. M Mrs. Gandhi, I, I must ask you, did you not concoct a threat to the survival of the state in order to ensure your own survival I'm in power? I'm sure that's a very rude question, and it's entirely baseless. There's nothing at all to base it on. Well, the Shah Commission, to which I must refer, because it was a commission set up by the government, it's a judicial inquiry, and he is an eminent judge, says, that, says very clearly that, that the reason for, and if I can quote Does just this, a, like, just like, if I may, no. you've said I've asked you a rude question. No, I but want may to, I, to, can may I just I defend? Just, no, may I, I just say one thing? I would just thing. like to say one thing about what is in the report, if I may, because what he says is that, that, that the only evidence he can find is the Allahabad judgment, and on the basis of that, he says, thousands were detained and a series of totally illegal and unwarranted actions followed involving untold human misery and suffering. That's why I put the question. I don't put it out of a desire to be rude to you, Mrs. Gandhi. Is, in a parliamentary democracy, is a judge competent to override what Parliament has done? The decision I took was ratified by the Cabinet and by the Parliament. It was not only accepted, it was applauded by the entire nation. Had we held the elections in 1976, we would have won hands down. Now, we did not hold the elections because the state of the economy was such at that time. The political situation was all right. But the state of the economy meant that we, had a, we could see that if we continued, we by, I don't mean us as people, but the policies we were pursuing, if they continued, we could give India a sta sound and stable economy. Why was it Had necessary? we held the elections then, this would not have been possible. Therefore, we jeopardized our political future and chose giving political stability to, I mean, economic stability and soundness to, to India, rather than saying, well, let us be sure of our election. Why then was it necessary to imprison Mr. Maharaji Desai, who then became Prime Minister of India? Was he an because economic threat to the no, state? No, were, they, these were the people who were destroying democracy. Destroying democracy? Destroying destro democracy. How? Because, well, I'm sorry that you people have such short memories, but um, because they felt they could not win an election, they said, we must take the battle to the streets. Uh, Mr. Moraji Desai is on record in an interview having said, we are going to surround the Prime Minister's house, we are going to surround Parliament, we will see that no business is done. Either the Prime Minister cannot come out, nobody can go in. Another member of the opposition, now a minister, said that if we cannot win by the ballot, we shall win by the bullet. Somebody else incited the police and the army. That was J.P. Naran, who said, was disobey illegal orders. He said, why couldn't you well, have taken, he, he, why, why could I just ask you, why couldn't you have used the law that you already had available to you to arrest these people if no, they were breaking the law? I'm afraid, you see, India is not a small country like the UK. It is a very big country in very complex problems. And in the whole country, they had created an atmosphere of extreme indiscipline so that uh, somebody like Mr. Galbraith said it seems to be a functioning anarchy, but it was not functioning, it was becoming an non-functioning anarchy. And Why? at that moment, if we had not stopped it, India would not have survived. Why now, unfortunately, the dealings of the present government are taking India along that path once again. The only difference is that because we left a very sound economy, uh, that momentum is sustaining the government. Why was it 
necessary to remove from every individual in India, and in particular from the tens of thousands who were put in prison, their right to go to court and, and, pro and, and the put their case, their, their, their right indeed to know why they'd been detained. Why did you remove those rights? Well, I would like to say with all respect that all this is happening today. There is no emergency in India, but 23,000 teachers who are non-political have been arrested for merely non-violent, peaceful demonstrations but for certain demands. But that isn't a justification, it's surely, a for justific what happened under, no, under, under you. No, but you have to see that if some things are happening all the time, it's not necessarily that something happened in emergency. If the police have indulged in excesses, they have been doing so before, during, and now, but, since But then. this is a different case, I'm going to you. No, your Home Minister said at the time, and I think rather neatly, if perhaps cynically pinpointing the issue, no fundamental rights, he said, have been taken away from any indiv individual, just their right to go to court to enforce their rights. Now, but that was under the special powers that you took. That was, but it We're was not talking about abuse by minor no, officials. No. We're talking about state policy. That is true, but it was, um, it was just for a very limited period. And uh, we have, in wartime, a lot of... Uh, uh, political rights and civil rights are taken away from people and this for India was as serious as a war, war period why because it, it did threaten our very survival. Why was it necessary, Mrs Gandhi, to forbid newspapers to report the speeches of MPs but in, wasn't, in No, I think censorship was not properly managed and uh, initially we thought it would be for a very brief period and some code of conduct would be worked out. That's remarkable, I think. But it you was say the not purpose of pre censorship, this is government um, regulations, um, is to guarantee certain safeties for the state. All s the chief censor must see everything that's published, and speeches of members of parliament um, must not be published in any manner or form, only speeches of ministers. I mean, was that necessary to defend India in from collapse? For a short period, yes, because as I said, the situation was more or less uh, going out of control, and it was necessary. There is which developing country has been able uh, to uh, go ahead. It's on only India has tried this experiment of having social and economic changes uh, through peaceful and democratic means. Now, when these means were threatened, we took a, a temporary measure. It was I who revoked, I declared the emergency, but also I who revoked Immediately it. before the elections, 21 yes, months later. Well, cert certainly, but then I did hold the elections. The I don't think there's a single instance in world history of this happening. The Shah Commission concluded that the I'm reasons no, for I'm the I haven't measures... Ended. I haven't ended at all, because since you're talking about the press, I would like to say something about the press here. A news item came in that the judge who had given his judgment in my election case died, and it was very broadly hinted that I had had him done away with. When the High Commissioner clarified the position that my judge is perfectly hale and hearty, living where he always lives, and a judge of a similar name has died of a heart, much older man has died of a heart attack in another part of the country, your newspapers did not have the grace even to print that contradiction. That seems a curious, now, curious grounds on no, which to not, justify no, the I'm complete just, removal of no, the freedom I'm, I'm of the press No, I'm very sorry. India, I'm not it? justifying. I'm just showing But you don't that, like the newspapers? No, I'm not. I'm saying that the newspapers are, are part of a, of a force which is there to obstruct the social and economic changes which we want to bring about. And you try to turn and it into a force to support what no, you we're were not, doing. no, we are not interested in support, but we are interested I'm in sorry, not in having the obstructions. The, the evidence, Mrs. Gandhi, shows that during that period, mm -hmm. for instance, All India, India Radio during that period, in one month, December 76, had over 2,000 lines reporting government statements, 34 lines recording opposition statements. I'm afraid you'll find exactly the same in All India Radio today. <laughs> So this is just um, a frailty in any case of the freedom no, whether of, of it the is radio. or not, I don't know. But it's no use picking out something out of context. This is what I'm trying to show. The Shah Commission said that the reasons for the measures taken against the media in general and the press in particular was to keep, and this is on the basis of, of, of the evidence put to him, was to keep the public in ignorance, to instill fear in them, thereby suppressing dissent in every form, individual, political, parliamentary, judicial. It was used as an instrument of news management aimed at thought control. Mrs. Okay, Gandhi. if you want to give a lecture on the Shah Commission, you needn't have me here, you can give it anyway, as other media are doing. We do not accept the Shah Commission's uh, report, and the people of India do not accept it. They have shown that he is quite irrelevant. 
his remarks and his findings to the situation which prevailed earlier and the, the situation which prevailed during the emergency, before the emergency or after. How does Mr. Shah know what is happening in the political world? What are the forces at work which want to destroy a developing economy? Is a, is a judge competent to decide that? Then why have democracy? Why have elections? Why have political people in power? It was a commission of inquiry which a lot of democracies No, it was use. not. It was, it was a purely vindictive action by the present government. It's, it's very interesting that of the cases referred to the Shah Commission, they, have, they did not want to inquire into any cases except those against me or those whom they considered my supporters. They did not even record the evidence or the, 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 of those who said anything in my favor. He just said this is irrelevant. In the courtroom itself, they had a picked crowd which jeered us. Anybody who wanted to, I mean, we didn't want cheering, but if anybody did, that person was thrown out. I mean, when you take up a thing, you should try and find out the whole background and what has actually happened. I, I, won't I mean, to, to us, it doesn't matter what the British media says. It's quite irrelevant to India. But it shows that you are divorced from the facts and divorced from what the people are thinking. And if you don't, uh, you, if you're not bothered about what the people are thinking, then you shouldn't talk about democracy. Uh, I, I certainly am bothered um, what the people are thinking. And of course, one's concerned to try and establish the basis on which they might or might not hold particular judgments. And that's why I'd like to ask you about the 20 months of your um, special powers. There were, I won't need to remind you, I think some 8 million people who were sterilized. More than 250. This is not, I, I'm I would, sorry, I, this, is not any, this figure has not been borne out by anybody in any commission. There is evidence to suppose that very large numbers of people were sterilized. But it's been, you have, you have, you have, well, it's been alleged that there was widespread compulsion. If there was compulsion at all for the purposes of argument, what would be your reaction to compulsory sterilization? I have sterilization? expressed myself in government statements as well as privately that I'm not for compulsion. Records from the time, from the Chief Secretary of the Government of Uttar Pradesh. Government attach highest importance to achievement of family planning targets. Failure to achieve monthly target will result in stoppage of salary suspension and severest penalties. Other states, all eligible cases for sterilization in my office and department have been sterilized. Persons who have refused to get themselves sterilized have not been paid their salaries. The evidence surely, Mrs. Gandhi, that a combination of intimidation, coercion, economic sanction, not giving people licenses, not giving people rights to free education and health and so on, were used by yes, officials were, throughout India to, 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 to force people, were. in effect, yes. to have sterilization. Yes, they were. Those are major, wide-scale excesses then, aren't they? No, I don't think so. And furthermore, now people realize that if our population goes up at the rate at which it is, which is going, uh, their children won't be alive. They won't, have the, they won't have enough food or education or any of those rights. Do you accept no responsibility at all? I have accepted all responsibility because I happen to be head of the government. But you believe but there, was no, there was nothing? No, you see, you cannot be categorical about these things. Certainly mistakes when you take up any major program mistakes will take place. But they were a, there was a very large force working against us, uh, which was determined to use anything it could to, against us. And they, I think that they played a very large part in creating these so-called excesses. A lot of them seemed to be in prison. You had tens of thousands in prison with endless more forces against you trying to destroy you, Mrs. Gandhi. And the most of the people in prison were smugglers, hoarders, black marketeers. Not decors. academics, students, teachers, politicians? No, very, no, they were politicians, but not many academics or, t or students. Well, the evidence... Unless, unless they were in the Naxalite movement or something like that. Under what? You have some... Uh, you, you are accepting without question a particular evidence which has not yet gone to court, which is sub -judicy, and which we do not accept. Under what conditions now would you... Would you justify imposing a similar state of emergency. Would you do that if, if you were in charge in India now, where you said there's this, this, this well, chaos and terrible problems? Would you do it now? No, because today's chaos is created by the government. You don't think it's that quite a different. It's quite a different situation. As I said at that time, as you said, that had we taken action in what you think is, say, is legal, earlier on, maybe all this would not have been necessitated. And this is why I feel that I was at fault in this that I did not take action earlier on. But we felt that 
elections were not far off and we could wait till the elections. We didn't know that these people would precipitate the situation as they did. We knew that in elections we may or may not win. You don't rule out another matter. state of emergency in India? No. As I'm saying, today there is a state of emergency. It is not legal, it is not constitutional, it doesn't have parliamentary sanction. But in every other way, there is a state of emergency. If Justice Mr. Shah says that the people are in fear, you have only to go and walk the streets of Delhi today, or Calcutta, or any city. And whereas at uh, that time, <coughs> only those who were in fear, who were doing something antisocial. But today, it is the common citizen, the poor man who is in fear. What then do you expect the future of India to be, Mrs. Gandhi? Well, the future of India is for us to decide, and we will fight it out in India. I don't think it's anybody else's business. You, of course, are soon going back to face criminal charges on the basis of the Shah Commission's allegations. Um, on the basis of that evidence, I, I, I'm obliged to ask you, why would it not serve the interests of truth and justice, justice for you to be found guilty? Because I'm not guilty. <laughs>